What are you doing? No, no, I can't believe you can't no. do that. Looking closely at one wire of a birdcage will prevent you from seeing its surrounding wires. From this microscopic perspective, it would appear that the birdcage is a futile device that could never contain or restrain a bird. It is only when you step back and see the cage as a whole, macroscopically, that you will understand why this structure is so constraining. Oppression is like this birdcage. You may recognize the individual barriers of oppression such as the gender wage gap, which dictates that on average, women are still paid 77 cents for every dollar a man makes. That people of color are continually denied housing and jobs based on stereotypical assumptions about their behavior. Hi, I'm here to apply for the managerial position. Sorry, the position's already been filled. Or that people in same-sex relationships have fewer or no marriage benefits. 22, room 22. But sir, sir, you can't go in there on your own. It's, I, Ben? Ben? I'm sorry, sir, you can't go in there. But he's my husband. But without understanding these disadvantages in relation to the larger context of oppression, they appear mildly unfavorable and in the grand scheme of things unimportant. It's only when you appraise all the barriers that an oppressed group is burdened with that you'll understand why this system is so limiting, debilitating, and harmful. From a microscopic perspective, Nora's decision between leaving her husband or staying in this abusive relationship is simple. She should just leave. Unfortunately, leaving is only one of the barriers that Nora must confront in order to escape this abusive nightmare. Looking at the wider context of oppression or domestic violence, we would find that this problem is exceedingly complex, systemic, and multifaceted, making the prospect of leaving far more complicated than it appears. For instance, Nora may love her husband and has promised to seek help may inspire hope that this time things actually will get better, although that's what he said last time, but this time he really means it. Her place of worship may strictly forbid her from a divorce, and if she follow through her family and social network may disown her. Statistically, leaving her husband and the time soon after is the most dangerous part of an abusive relationship which results in outbursts that often end violently. Sometimes fatally. Additionally, it takes an average of seven times for a survivor to leave an abusive partner for good. She may worry that upon leaving, the abuse will transfer to her children, that she may never see her kids again. In fact, kids in immigration status are often used as leverage in domestically violent relationships. She may be financially dependent on a partner, an effect that is compounded when taken into account that she doesn't have a job, income, or relevant work experience. She may not have anyone who is willing to take her into their home. The local shelter may be full or unavailable to accept children. Abusers often isolate their victims, making it more difficult to find available friends or resources that would help her escape. Constant verbal abuse may chip away at her self-esteem, resulted in a feeling of low self-worth, fear that she'll never find another partner, or a lack of autonomy, making it extremely difficult to devise an effective safety plan. When appraised microscopically, oppression is underestimated. In order to truly comprehend the harm that this system inflicts, you must understand oppression macroscopically, with all the disadvantages that a targeted group is confronted with. If you or someone you know is struggling with domestic violence, please call the Confidential National Hotline at 
1-800-799-SAFE. That's 1-800-799-7233. Or text telephone at 1-800-787-3224. The trained specialists can assist with advice, a safety plan, support, and different advocacy options.